uh, we are going to be working with removing some extra elements of the scene. In this case, we are working with the conversation log that we call, call convo log. Uh, sometimes there aren't any highlighted words, so we need to remove the balloons, otherwise they keep showing up where there are no highlighted words. We have, according to our step-by-step, -step, the first step zero, step zero is we need to select a target scene we want to make the modifications. We have just finished uh, fixing Rockport, so uh, groundwater is the only highlighted word, uh, word and the balloon is popping here, so it's fine. Uh, in our game, the next scene would be uh, Lehigh Gap 1. So select the target scene to make the modification. So in project, the project folder, assets, uh, IVR1, scene, and then the scene is going to be Lehigh Gap 1. We click twice to open it. Since I'm not working with uh, the narration because there is nothing else to do here now, I'm going to hide it temporarily and I'm gonna go to the second step locate the game objects to be modified so we need to find the balloons in the conversation log so in the hierarchy panel we have one screen space canvas to the second level main panels so opening the second level we have conversation sub panel and three definition tool tips so these are the balloons that appear. Currently, we're not seeing anything, so we need to go to step two in our step-by-step. -step. If the game objects are grayed out, or that means inactive in a scene, they are not showing the scene, we need to select the upmost parent and activate it. So uh, following the sequence from the previous step, the upmost parent is the screen space canvas, but screen space canvas is already active, we see the check mark here. So the next one would be main panels, and it's also uh, checked. The, the third one is the conversation sub panel, so I need to check it. Now I see that. The next ones are the balloons. So we see that we have three highlighted words here, and we have three uh, six terms or balloons. Not only that, we will also be having uh, six invisible triggers to, uh, that accompany these six balloons and I think it is located here in the log. So images here are invisible images that we put over the highlighted word so we can trigger the balloon to appear. I am going to be set, uh, deleting three, four and five but if I try to delete now, it's not going to work because it's a, it's blue, it's a prefab, unit is going to complain. So I'm going to cancel that and I need to unlock the prefab. I don't know what this is happening, but it's happening. Uh, it happened to Jennifer and I in the Rockport 2 scene. The prefab is not uh, allowing us to unlock it. So what we did was we got the most recent prefab version in our prefab folder here in the project area prefab so convo sub panel July 27 I dragged it and added to the main panel you can see that when we add another element to a prefab it receives this plus sign here okay uh, so Jennifer is reminding me that we need to click with the right button to unpack uh, so in this case, we are not being able. The new one that we brought here, show, when we click with the right button, it shows the options on unpack prefab. So we can un unlock it to make changes in that. So we can do that now. We have this, a similar structure. So we have combo sub panel, definition tool tips, and logs. I am going to be having only three balloons. So I'm going to have only three terms. I'm selecting them and deleting. Notice that I'm leaving them uh, paired like one and one, two and two, three and three, so that we don't lose the functions that we prepared with the event trigger script here in the inspector panel. So the 
the first invisible image, which is here over quarry, it activates the term one, which is the balloon number one, when we enter with the pointer, with when we enter with the mouse over this area in the game view, like here. And when we exit, it uh, deactivates this object with the uh, function set active false. So let me see the other ones. So geological servers surveys are in the correct place, but this text is not the current one. It's an old one. We are going to go to the weird blue conversation panel, log, text, and we are going to copy the new text that we updated. So we click here in this settings cog icon with the left button, then we copy component, so everything that is in this text mesh component, the text and the configurations that set up is co copied and I can paste it in another similar component which is a text mesh pro and we have it here in our new unpacked prefab. So I selected the text mesh pro, I'm gonna paste it here as values, not as new. If I paste as new I'm gonna be duplicating the component. I want to just to override the values. So we have three highlighted words which are eroding bolts and packet. However, their trigger images are not in the correct space anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select th this image here. I'm going to come to the scene view and I can either press F to focus but it's too much or I can zoom out to a place that I think it's better for me. So with the, this rect tool uh, selected, which is the blue bounding boxes that I usually call it, we can uh, move the icon or uh, the object around as long as we click and hold with the left button in the center of the bounding boxes. Not in this center circle because this is where the pivot of the image is. This area here. So click, hold, we can move it, and then you can fine tune to the space of, uh, the, of the yellow highlighted word. We need to do the following, the, the other ones as well. So image two should be over package. So I'm gonna call, drag it there and adjust the size. So we don't activate the balloon if the mouse is off this word. And the third invisible trigger is here. I'm going to drag it to bolts. Oh, actually, this is the same word. So we don't need a third trigger. I'm deleting this third trigger and I'm deleting the third balloon. So the invisible triggers are... Oh, we do need the third uh, trigger in this case because the, the word was split into another sentence so boat doesn't have the invisible trigger anymore. So I'm gonna control Z because I made a mistake. Now I recover the third trigger and the third term. I just need to make sure that because I'm kinda the packet boats is the same term, I need to update my event trigger here. I don't want to, a third balloon to be popping up. The balloon that needs to pop up is the same balloon of packet bolts, which is term 2. So I'm gonna drag it here, both in the pointer enter and pointer exit. When you drag a new game object to this uh, event trigger script, the functions are reset, but what we want to do is to, when we hover the mouse, when we enter with the pointer uh, in this area, we want this object to activate. So it's game object set active bool. Bool is a boolean which means true or false, on and off. If the checkbox is marked, means on or true. That's what we want when we enter the word, the space of the word. And on the pointer exit uh, method, we want to have game object set active false. So that's fine now. We really don't need the third term balloon because we just have two uh, 
terms here, eroding and packet boats. Let's see. Term 1, the balloon is kind of away from the word eroding. What I'm going to do to better adjust it, I'm going to temporarily activate the, the game object to see where the balloon is. You can see that like, if we do this, the balloon is going to go all outside the boundaries of the conversation panel. So we need to re-invert the, the position of this balloon. In order to do that, we just need to put a minus sign in the x uh, variable of the rect transform. So I'm going to be flipping the x uh, number so the balloon changes. Another thing that I'll have to be doing now is to flip the uh, x-axis of the text game object, which is this one here. You can see a place to mine. So description TMP is here. I'm going to go to scale x and put a minus sign. Finally, I need to adjust the bounding boxes of the text within the space of the uh, black uh, pop-up. So, then the text is not going to go over the black area of the balloon. Now that we have adjusted the area, I am going to hide again the balloon, and that's fine. Second term, the, ba the original balloon is very far from it, so I am going to drag it closer. So to, in order to save time, I'm not going to put the balloon here going off. I am going to put the balloon after boats because then we don't need to invert the position of the balloon. So it's fine. I'm going to deactivate the balloon and we have fixed that. The last issue that we can see here is that the position of the uh, close button is wrong. So let's identify where this close button is. In the Convol sub panel, which is this uh, panel that we are using, we click on Panel, and then you see that the boundary boxes select exactly the game object we are working with. If we open this panel parent, we will have a header. So it's this top area here containing these elements. And button is there. So the Rex transform is to the middle of the screen, and we don't want that. Luckily, we didn't uh, delete the previous uh, crazy sub convo sub panel. And if I hide our new panel, you will see that the X box, the X button to close the panel, is in the correct place. So what we can do is we go to that uh, game object here of the old panel. Go open the header, click the game object button, and all the elements, the variable, the parameters of the uh, rec transform component, I'm gonna copy here, copy component, and then I'm gonna paste in the one that we are editing in the new one. So the new one is currently inactive, so we we see nothing, right? But we still can click on the game objects and I know that the game object that I wanna edit is the button so I clicked here and you can see that the bounding box is not in the correct place uh, so I can I'm gonna hide the other one and show this one so we can see the changes happening so now this is the panel that we are working with the new one I'm gonna click the button and I'm gonna click here direct transform uh, settings so I can paste the values and override the older values. Now you can see that the position of the close button is in the correct place.